Hello and welcome back. In this session we'll be covering the workflow from the collection of rent to paying contractors, landlords and moving your agency fees from your client account to your business operating account. You'll learn how to save hours of time by matching rents that's come in your bank from the tenants with the rents that are due in the system. So step number one, we're going to collect rent. So let's go to the rent due screen on the left. Now this screen shows rent charges that are either due or overdue. And you could manually collect them from this page by ticking the boxes here on the left and then going to take a payment down the bottom or by going to each tenant's rent account and collecting the payments one by one. Now I'm going to show you a much quicker way by going to the rent upload feature at the top and then uploading a bank statement that you've downloaded from your bank. So first choose your bank account and next we'll upload a CSV file export of your bank statement. Now if your bank happens to appear on the list here then simply select it then proceed to the next screen. However in our case let's assume that your bank's not in the list we'll just jump back and this time going back to the menu we'll select custom. Now selecting custom from the previous menu brings us an interim page allowing us to map the fields from the bank statement with the fields in the system. Now for the system to match up the incoming rent it's only necessary to select the date, payment reference number and the credits column from your bank statement. Now some banks may provide additional data fields like the tenant's name or additional reference numbers. Now these aren't necessary but they will help you to identify transactions. Ok so let me explain what we're looking at on this page. The left column shows transactions from your bank account. Rents that are due in the system will appear in the middle column and what the system is going to do is automatically match up the reference numbers found in your bank statement with the reference numbers found in your system. So let's take a look at the transaction that we see here on the right. The reference number matched up perfectly from the bank statement to the transaction in the system. The amount received which is £500 here is exactly the same as the amount of the rent charge that was £500. So in this case it's a perfect match and it will automatically go from the left column to the right column and will be marked as a perfect match. Now let's take a look at the second transaction down the list which is a part payment. In this case the tenants made a part payment towards a rent debt of £7,000. That's just going to go towards paying off the oldest rent that's due. Ok so another scenario is where the tenants paid too much rent so you now have the option to put the money towards the advanced rent account or pay it towards their main account. Now you'd notice a small link here to split the payment and what this allows you to do is distribute the tenants money between the main account and the advanced rent account. Ok so jumping back to the top we'll notice that there are some rents received in the bank that are not matching up with the rents that's due in the system in the middle column here. Now that's because the reference number that the tenant used is different from the reference that's found in the system. So for the first rent run we'll manually match the transactions up and then we'll tell the system to remember the reference that the tenant used so the next time we do the rent run it will automatically match and proceed to the next stage. So in this case let's select the first transaction. We'll then allocate it to the rent that's due here and then click on the match button. Now let's scroll down the page to see the transaction and as I mentioned earlier this is where you would update the payment reference with a reference that was used by the tenant. So you would then repeat this process for every transaction that's unallocated. Now if we look at the top here there's a transaction that we can't identify so maybe the tenants pay the rent too early or they've used an obscure reference and we don't know which tenant it belongs to. If that's the case that's not a problem we'll skip this transaction and come back to it at a later stage. Ok process transactions will appear here on the left any unallocated transactions that we skipped will appear here in the list. So let's click to allocate it and search for the tenancy that it belongs to. If you weren't able to find out who made this payment to your bank we'll just click on the checkbox here and we'll process this later on. 
Okay, now that rents have been processed, let's go back to the accounts page and have a quick recap. We've uploaded a bank statement and allocated any incoming rents to the respective tenancies. The tenant reference numbers were automatically updated in our tenancy details pages. What this means is the next rent run should be a lot quicker because the transactions should automatically match up. So next, let's go down the bottom here and take a look at any transactions that we weren't able to allocate and allocate them to their respective tenancies. Okay, so we've just done step one and that's to receive rents. Step two is to now check work orders to see if there are any contractors that need to be paid. Remember, if you go and pay off landlords before you've checked to see if there are any works, the chances are that there won't be any rent to pay the contractors. So, step one, collect rent. Step two, go to work orders. Check to see if the landlord has sufficient funds for the job to be paid. If not, just simply select Complete Awaiting Rent from the drop down menu here. And in this case, we'll assume that there are sufficient funds and we're ready to process the transaction. Next, enter the contractor's invoice and what you're charging the client. Now, before processing any work order transaction, it's important to learn about all the settings and options that you'll find. And please watch my other tutorial to ensure that your accountant is happy with the way that the accounts related transactions are posted in your chart of accounts. Now that we've just done step two, which is to check work orders and process the transactions, we're gonna move on to step three, and that's to pay contractors and landlords. So let's go to pay contractors in the bottom left. Select the contractors you wish to pay and then click on pay selected. Now choose the jobs you wish to mark off as paid and then select if you wish to send a remittance advice slip. And that completes step three, which is to pay the contractors. So step one was to receive rents Step two was to process work orders. Step three, pay contractors. Now let's move on to step four and go to properties by landlord. And then go on to paying the landlords that are in credit. Now a handy tip, um, clicking the balance found on the right here will give you a quick preview of the landlord's statement, which you may want to quickly check the figures before processing the transaction. Right, let's click here to send a bulk statement. The first statement you send will be the last one month and from then onwards it will generate a period from a day after the last statement was sent to the current date. Okay, now that you've marked landlords and contractors to be paid, this will now take us to the payment history page where we're able to export a CSV file that can be uploaded into your bank to make a BAX payment. Okay, so the final step is now to pay yourselves any agency fees that are sitting in your client bank account. And this is a two-step process. So first of all, we're going to go to the transfer report. And this page will let us see any income minus any expenses that have accrued for a particular period of time. So the section down here will allow us to see the grand total that we need to transfer from the client account to the business operating account. And that will include net profits, VAT and NRL tax. And down the bottom here, we can see when the last transfer was made. So to recap, let's go back to the top and we're going to generate a report to see how much agency fees we've made in order to transfer across. So remember, this was a two-step process. First, we need to get this figure, which is in this case, 2,576. And next, we need to go back to accounts and then transfer funds. And 
from here we'll simply select the client bank, the business operating account, and we'll enter the amount to transfer. And that concludes the rent cycle. So here's a quick recap on what we've just covered.